Welcome to DLA Piper's video blog from Durban, South Africa, from the 17th Conference of the Parties of the UNFCCC in Daba. In Daba is an African name for something like a meeting. Traditionally, the elders met uh, to discuss big issues, and when they came together to discuss those, they would call this an Indaba. And this is what the presidency, South Africa, of this COP has named the informal gathering of the ministers to discuss the big issues of this COP, which has started yesterday. And uh, we talked about the offsite. Now they're kind of like in a closed up room. And just so you understand how this works, we have about 60 ministers attending. The selection is random. The important ministers, of course, some countries that have always been very engaged in this process. Some regional groups might nominate some ministers because you cannot just bring everyone together because that would make 194 ministers in one room. So to, to break it down a little bit, they reduced the number to about 60. So they come together and you would think now they can really actually start working because it's informal, it's only ministers. But even here you have to adhere to the political protocol. So let's assume one minister that is very important starts talking. Now this will be followed by the second minister who would say, Your Excellency, thank you very much. And it might be a thank you of about two minutes. Or if one minister from one country that the other country doesn't like that much speaks a little bit long, let's say five minutes, then the neighboring country where they don't have the best relations would like to pick up and also speak just to make a point, maybe the same, maybe slightly different, and try to speak for six minutes. Now this is the political game. However, it's not that they are just using up time. They do talk about issues. We have three big issues in that room that need, need to be resolved. The one is finance, mitigation, MRV, which stands for monitoring, reporting and verifying of emissions, national emissions. On finance, this is broken down into three issues. We have the Green Climate Fund. Lots of talks about this. We had a mandate from Cancun, the last COP, to set this up and everyone was hoping we can operationalize this fund to really do its work here. And the ministers have to resolve at this stage in time really two, uh, three big questions. The one is the relationship of the fund and, and this UNFCCC process. How do they interrelate? Who is reporting to whom? Has the UNFCCC process some kind of like responsibility to make final decisions or is the fund independent? Related to that is the question about the legal nature of the fund. It's very technical, but if you set it up independent, then there's not so much uh, playing around with it and the fund can be operational. And then the last question, also something that the ministers have to address, um, what is the relationship between the fund and the host countries where it finances projects? Developing countries are naturally uh, concerned about any kind of institution, UN institution, that would dictate how they have to operate in country. So they want to make sure within the fund their sovereignty is protected. The other two issues related to finance are long-term finance and the Standing Committee on Finance. The Standing Committee, again, is a little bit technical. It's all about the relationship between an independent standing committee that would review the performance of developed countries as to how much money they make available in this process and how to measure that. And then the, uh, the, the long-term commitment on finance, the big issue for the ministers is how can we avoid that there is not a gap between financing because the mandate from Cancun and from Copenhagen was to mobilize 100 100 billion US dollars annually starting from 2013 up to 2020. And there is a concern that this will not be possible. And this is the biggest concern for both developing and developed countries. And it's kind of the glue that keeps this together. So this is what the ministers talk about when it comes to finance. Mitigation, that's the big issue, of course. What, uh, how do we, get, how do we uh, overcome the mitigation gap? How do we get to the two degrees Celsius temperature raise, long term projected, and not more than that? And uh, the EU is kind of in the leadership. We talked about this throughout this week. Um, they're trying to identify a roadmap as to how to get there. And um, this is something in the room, so to speak, that where the 60 ministers, when they actually are not just uh, playing the political game, have to talk about an MRV. MRV is really how, how much can we expect developing countries to know about their emissions and their emission national inventories and how much have, to, have they uh, report to. And please don't forget, this is also a trade issue. Once you know how much your cement factory emits, then you know how competitive it is, how much power it uses. And this is across all the sectors. Once you know a lot about emissions, you know a lot of the about the industry of a country. And therefore, countries like China or Brazil, the larger countries that are competitive in international trade, because um, while they produce cheaper, are very interested in not too much information being out there. 
So, on, uh, what, how, well, assuming we can resolve these, uh, these issues, what will be the final outcome? I'm just uh, uh, share with you a speculation I have today. I have been starting looking at text that is being developed between the ministers, and it will not be as short as Copenhagen. Copenhagen, we had three pages text. It was very, very high level, but it will not be as long as Cancun. Cancun was about 20. The Cancun agreement is about 25 pages dealing with all the issues. So my best bet at the moment, it will be something in the middle. It will address um, all the issues that we just talked about. Fortunately, as far as I can tell, it also will address market and the involvement of private sector, which is always a concern, ultimately in order to mobilize that money that we need to be invested in climate change mitigation and adaptation um, has to come from the private sector, the majority of it. That seems to be addressed at the current text. So my best bet at the moment, look forward uh, to about 10 to 12 pages with a little bit less detail than in, Copen uh, in, in uh, Cancun, a little bit more detail than, than, in, uh, um, uh, than in Copenhagen. And uh, with that, we'll, we'll monitor again tomorrow. And uh, maybe there is more to say about this text. And I welcome you then. Stay tuned. And uh, tune in again tomorrow, uh, Friday, which is the last official day. Doesn't mean that we will close down the session on Friday, but it officially is the last day. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. Bye.